Hi, this is Krista Rimmer, and this is day three of my Bell's Palsy, my journey with self-care. I was diagnosed with Bell's Palsy three months ago, and about a week and a half ago, I um, decided to start taking care of myself better. I'm a certified hypnotherapist, and all the things that I would normally recommend to a client, I was not doing for myself. So I started to incorporate some of the techniques that I would recommend to a client, I started incorporating them into my daily self-care. The, um, if you have this in your, in your watching, if you have Bell's Palsy, a, a key component to at least feeling better is to remove as much stress as you possibly can from your life. It's, it's not going to be a hundred percent. You'll still you may still be concerned about whether it'll go away, how long it will last, will it be permanent. With Bell's palsy, especially like when you first get it, you'll spend so many nights looking at all sorts of videos on YouTube, doing all sorts of research, looking into what it is, what, what you can do to help yourself. One of the main things I, I believe is, is awareness of how much stress you're under. It seems to me that when I've had a stressful situation or I've overworked myself or done something, it, we're in Arizona, so it's, it's really hot here, and if I've overworked myself or, I've, or did yard work or something, it seemed that whatever progress I had um, regressed. And not completely back at the beginning because the pain and the swelling wasn't there, but any kind of movement that I was noticing, it just kind of backtracked. So. I've been doing a lot of work on stress. What I did for day three, I actually had a friend offer to do a cranial sacral work on me. And her name is Cody Cotton, and she did the work. It was about an hour long, and kind of just going through the body, looking for where you may feel like a, a, like a bottled up kind of energy or block, and she kind of un unwound that energy. It was, it was interesting because while it was happening, almost from the moment we started, the, we had a monsoon, they call them monsoons here, um, we had a monsoon here in Arizona, and there was lightning and thunder, and you could hear the crack and, and the, the noise of the thunder, and it was, it was amazing because it was all happening, it seemed, it was all happening in correlation to what was happening to me on the table. So I'm not saying that I cause lightning, but I cause lightning, just kidding. And it was afterwards, I felt so much more um, at ease. I didn't feel as stressed out about, about my face and about progress or, or any of those things. I, I felt a lot more relaxed. I've also been using uh, essential oils. I use lavender a lot because it's very calming. So I use that for uh, stress because it calms and it helps relax you. And for here, in, fr in front of my ear and behind my ear, I've made a blend with helichrysum, thyme, and peppermint. And that's for stimulation of the nerve. And so I put it in front of my ear and behind my ear. Peppermint, you don't wanna get too close to your eye because it may cause like some um, aggravation, irritation. So I just put it here and here. Where the nerve comes out and I've also been doing hypnotherapy I'm I'm a hypnotherapist and <laughs> I did not do any hypnotherapy on myself for the first three months so I recorded a hypnotherapy session basically giving myself suggestions in regards to the healing of the nerves and my face coming back to the way it was before or better or better and I also do, during the day, I do visualization. So with visualization, I just relax and I imagine myself smiling. So I just close my eyes and imagine myself smiling. And while I'm doing that, I imagine myself, myself, I imagine myself smiling and what it would look like if I was smiling and I imagine my eye closing perfectly on its own. 
And as I'm imagining those things happening physically inside what I'm thinking is every day in every way, my face is healing. Every day in every way, my face is healing. Every day in every way, my face is healing. And I do that whenever I can think about it during the day and right before I go to sleep. So those are the techniques I've been using for day three. And I'm still wearing this eye patch. Um, at night, you should be taping your eye or wearing the Band-Aid eye patch. Keeping your eye closed at night to protect from any damage, any debris, and from your eye from drying out so you don't get a corneal tear and the eye can become infected and you can lose your eye. So protect your eye. So this is day three results. And it seems to me that even though I like being a pirate, sometimes the eye patch kind of causes it to droop a little bit more. I think it's pushing down here. But you can see my eye is kind of red. Um, today, and maybe it's the, the storms, I don't know, but today was like a no bueno eye day. So, closing my eyes. Um, it seems to close, well, I was able to get to close all the way, but I don't think it's closing all the way now. But my eye, you can see with the Bell's palsy phenomena, the eye kind of like, ooh, like mad eye moody. So the moody eye, when I just close, I know it's mostly open, but eye goes up to the top of the head so you can't see. So it feels like it's mostly closing now. So that's an improvement. Um, eyebrows. This one. So this one is it's moving, but not as as not all the way up. Nostrils. So there's some movement there. Um, if I just it's mostly even now. And then that's with um, but if I smile like really smile but no teeth. It's a lot more here, but I feel tugging here, and I feel tugging here, which I wasn't feeling before I had some of the work done. And then pursing your lips, it's still, hmm. but I have noticed improvement, so I'm going to continue with my self-care. And I will be back tomorrow, and um, we'll go from there. Thank you so much.